Well, there's nothing more disheartening and frustrating for a parent or caregiver than having to change bed sheets every morning for a child who is still wetting themselves at night. On Coffee Group, we have some tips and some reassurance from Plunkett nurse Charlotte Harris and mum of two, Charlie Hewitt. Welcome along, guys. Hi. Thank you. Charlie, let's start with you. First-hand experience of this at the moment, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. So my son, Theo, um, we're learning, I suppose, how to be dry at night. And it's actually not something that you can learn. Um, it is all about being ready. I've realised that I am one of the 100,000 um, families in New Zealand Zealand that experience regular bedwetting with children. Um, and it's not really just the, the child's experience, it's the lack of sleep. So collectively, mums in New Zealand are dealing with 10, up to 10,000 hours a night of lost sleep and additional 17,000 hours of extra washing. Oh my goodness, that yeah. is an awful lot when you put it all together like that. Um, Charlotte, from a medical point of view, what's, what's actually going on? Well, there's a large variety of things that are happening for that child. Um, to get them ready to be dry at night time. The first thing that we're looking at is the child's bladder capacity. It actually needs to grow large enough to be able to hold that urine over night time. The second thing that we want to see is a child uh, developing a specific hormone which tells their bodies to reduce the amount of urine they produce at night and the child also needs to be able to actually wake up when they feel that their bladder is full. Mm. So if any of those things isn't quite developed in that child yet, then they're going to struggle to stay dry at night time. And then obviously the hormone thing that all tra happens, happens at different ages for different Absolutely. children? Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's very much a journey of development and we can't say that that's going to happen at a certain age, um, it will happen when that child's body is ready. Mm. Yeah. Charlie, what should we say to a short child when they wake up in a puddle in the middle of the night? Sometimes they don't wake up though, this is the <coughs> thing as well. Yeah, and, and it's the morning. I think the biggest thing is being understanding and patient. Um, it's not about something that they can control or you know anything that you can blame them for. I think giving them that reassurance and giving them that confidence that they can and they shouldn't be scared about going to sleep and that it is normal. It's part of them growing up. Mm. What sort of age do they start, so just your child averagely start not wetting the bed? Well, it's really much, it's hard to say. It's like potty training, it's, isn't it? It's like potty training. Any time between the age of three up to, um, you know, seven for some children. Mm. And it is very much a journey. Um, if a child is still frequently wetting the bed after the age of seven, that's when we'd be looking at, um, you know, getting extra support and maybe chatting to a GP. Um, should you avoid sleepovers, do you think, if your child is still bedwetting? No, absolutely not. You know, this is, that's the part of fun of growing up. Um, and things like the dry night, so the absorbent underwear, Spider-Man, they yeah. can actually put them in their sleeping bags before they go to their friend's house. Completely discreet. They can get their jammies on at night and then wriggle into their sleeping bags, put the dry nights on, and then wriggle out of them in the morning and nobody need know. Yeah. And I think the other thing is really um, talking to siblings and making sure that we're silencing that teasing as well so mm. that they understand the journey that they're on. Exactly. Well, I know with my children is that they all went through it so no one actually teased each other because they, yeah. don't, they knew that and I kept reminding them you've been through this through. Yeah. Um, my son used to wear those as headgear as well. Very good <laughs> on the Spider-Man one. Um, so what about the professional advice like if your child after seven what sort of advice is on offer for a child after seven that's still bedwetting regularly? So at that point it really much is going to have a conversation with your GP and they can do certain investigations to find out what's happening for that individual child and just support that family through that whole journey of um, the child being ready. So, yeah. Exactly, and also the fact that with the um, with the child who's bedwetting, we're talking frequently. We're not talking like once a month or something after seven. Exactly. If it's happening m practically every night or every second night or so. Absolutely. So, what are your tips then for um, parents who are just putting on right now another load of washing? <laughs> Have you both got some tips for that? Charlie? Yeah, there's a couple um, a couple of things at night. I suppose don't limit um, fluid intakes. Um, we, we actually know that we need the fluid to make sure that we're trying to train that bladder to be big enough, mm -hmm. um, and we still need to make sure that they're hydrated and and maybe light a flight path on the way to the bed. So at night, make sure there's a couple of little lights. So if they do wake up, they can go to the bathroom mm. easily. Um, and I think really, obviously, have some dry nights on hand. Um, put them in the pyjama drawer as well. Or just have some spare sheets and some spare pyjamas at hand. So still hydrating them even at night time? Yep. Because that seems like the obvious one is that you sort of cut back on their having the fluids so they don't go so much at night. Um, Charlotte, what are your tips? Uh, very similar to what Charlie's saying, really. Um, to embellish on the on the hydration, it's good to keep them really well hydrated during the day as well, so that they're not desperately thirsty before bed. Mm. Um, so that's that actually really helps with that bladder control as well during the day. Um, 
we also talk a lot at the Buffalo School Check that we do um, with families about talking to the children about what's actually happening with them as well uh, so that children can make these decisions themselves about going to the toilet, making sure they actually go before bed, mm -hmm. that they go before they get up, you know, yeah. when they get up in the morning, making a flight path towards the bathroom so that there's a little night light or something so it's not scary if they do get up in the night and really supporting that child through it so if they do wet, telling them it's okay. Uh, as well. Not mm. a big deal, just don't buy the expensive mattress till they're a little bit older Absolutely. perhaps. <laughs> I thank you both very much for joining us today. Thank Our you. Great advice. Now you can go to the Plunkett website to see the top 10 tips for coping with bedwetting.